Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Boomi World 19. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. John and I have a couple of gents joining us. To my right is Jeff Everson, the Global Managing Director for Custom Application Engineering at Accenture. Hey Jeff. Hey. Welcome. Thank you, glad and to be here. We're glad to have you. And we've got Steve Wood back with us, the CPO of Boomi. Hey Steve. Hey Lisa, it's, it's been, been ages. minutes, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think. Great to yeah. see you. Yeah, yeah. Minutes. see you again, John. <laughs> so guys, so we're now going to dig into some research about the, the history of Boomi and iPads, and just looking at how the consumerization effect has in, infected, <laughs> not probably a bad word, has really infiltrated, how's that? Infiltrated Every great. industry, you know, organizations went from having enterprise applications, legacy applications, cloud applications, custom applications. Let's talk about custom applications. What are you seeing in the customer marketplace for the demand for having this level of customization, whether it's a retailer or you know, a utilities it, company? It really doesn't matter what industry it is these days. Custom applications are going through a renaissance. It is, it is truly the renaissance of custom where uh, there was once a swing towards enterprise applications and, and the packages and so on, and now it's realized that, oh gosh, to, to separate ourselves from our competition, we have to create something that doesn't exist. Well, that is by its nature, a custom application, yeah. and so these are coming up more and more uh, across the industry, and it's, it's really starting to dominate the value chain for yeah. software. You know, we're here in DC, and public sector is going through a modernization as well. You look at government procurements, I mean, essentially with data, everything's instrumentable. You have unlimited resources with cloud computing. So essentially, personalization's a hot trend, so applications are being personalized, they're customized. So every app should be not general purpose unless it's either under the covers. So this is the conversation we've been having. You guys, Boomi has a platform, you enable apps, you guys are deploying it. How are customers responding to this? Because to me, they might go, well, custom apps me feels expensive, it feels one-off. The old adage, it's a one-off. But it seems to be coming back. It, it, it does, uh, and the fact is you're able to do things so much more quickly today than you ever have been able to in the, fast, in the past. And uh, the ability to create new experiences quickly and react in an agile fashion to how those applications are being received in the marketplace, react to the data that is generated, both as the primary data and as the data exhaust from those systems, to determine what your customers need, what they want, how they're uh, going to act, uh, what they're going to buy. Uh, all of those things are things that we can pull together so much more quickly today than, than we could ever in the past, and so it's great. Steve, we were talking earlier about how app, you know, data's a real big part of, this, of, the, of the equation now, but if you think about the application world, it used to be the infrastructure would dictate what you could build. Yeah. Now you have application developers saying, this is what I want. Yeah. And now the infrastructure is so programmable, it's kind of flipped around. They're dictating kind of terms, if you yeah, will. I suppose, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's definitely been this sort of uh, emergence of these low code platforms to kind of help manage that. I mean, and they're kind of taking care of a lot of the infrastructure so you can kind of scale them as needed. But yeah, I mean, there's been a, I mean, it's been a huge breath. I, mean, I couldn't agree more. There's like the, the demand for our applications. We're seeing a lot, you know, sure there's the mega applications. We, we tend to leave those to our sister company, uh, Pivotal, yeah. to code those. But there's this whole other ecosystem of applications everywhere, the personalizations that the line of business needs to improve their business processes. So we're kind of after that layer, but we have to do it in the right way. We have to make it super easy to do on the infrastructure that people expect it to be, with the architecture they expect to see, so they're highly customizable, so they get exactly what they want. Yeah, Jeff, you know, we always talk in the industry and joke on theCUBE, you know, the game has changed, but it's still the same. And you know, every time a new trend comes in, oh, it's the death of something, and media, we're in media, you got to say something's dying when something new starts, right? But nothing really changes, if you think about applications, it's the same game just with a different twist to it with cloud. How are customers responding to this? Because obviously there's benefits, business benefits, cost benefits, bottom line, top line, with how they're attacking the uh, application development. Then they got a data tsunami happening, but they got to build apps. Right, it's it, not it the was death of, that, <laughs> of anything, right? It's a. It, it was once said that uh, that apps are eating the world, and and now it's really that data is feeding the world, right? And and so the, the amount of data that's out there and accessible and usable uh, within applications is is absolutely incredible. 
Um, and so with the emergence of the cloud in order to uh, support those massive amounts of data and to drive rapid development and then low code to make that uh, uh, development much easier, these things all uh, come together and, and you talked about the death of X, Y, or Z, we talk now about living systems, right? And living systems are things that are easy to modify. They're uh, you know, absolutely attainable and usable and expandable. Uh, for uh, for any kind of use and ultimately adaptable. So John mentioned the word one-off a minute ago, and that reminded me of something where you know in whatever industry that you're in, not too long ago it was ah well, customers got some one-off app, whether it's an application or part of their infrastructure that's expensive and it's not something that can be monetized. But now to your point, it's it's really custom applications are a big part of a business's competitive advantage. So what is it about the, the customized apps? Is it, is it the fact that it's you know, driven by an API that's programmable that allows it to be customized at scale to where it's not a one-off from a support perspective, it's something that really a company can use as that competitive leg up? Right, in, the, in this living, uh, living systems uh, world, we really have agile engineering, agile methods, and so that we're doing development quickly, and we're doing this in an engineering fashion that has microservices and small pieces of, of uh, functionality that can be uh, grabbed and uh, plugged and played together to, uh, to create different experiences. And so uh, that, that granularization of uh, software is something that, uh, that drives this flexibility and, and enables us to make modifications and updates quickly. Yep. How, actually, I can give you a customer example of that. That was something we we done, which is I often sort of term it like how the oil and gas industry saved nurses in Africa, or saved uh, people in Africa. Which is uh, we built a solution that allowed them uh, nurses in sub-Saharan Africa to visit patients out in the field. Uh, they built it on a low-code platform, which is uh, Flow, part of Boomi connected through APIs, connected to all their infrastructure, but a lot of their work was on uh, 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 Android tablets offline. So with the low-code platform, they could deliver this solution with all the offline capabilities, all the connectivity, all the integration all built in without writing really any code. The only code they wrote was to kind of customize the look and feel so it looked exactly what they want. So they delivered that on an early version of our offline framework. And then laterally, the oil and gas industry, Origin Energy, deployed a similar solution to their rigs that allows you to do some really complicated things with form validation and better validation rules, embedded data synchronization. They really forced us to improve our offline framework to something which was you know, a, 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 a big jump ahead of where it was before. And then lo and behold, the nurses in Africa came back to us and said, well actually we want to update our app, but we want to run it on desktops as well as iPads, funnily enough. And we were like, well, good news, we've actually already added that support. And so, uh, literally from three days of that phone call to them going live with it on laptops and iPads, that was all it took. They didn't have to write any code. They literally, we just, we gave them access to the new UI offline framework, they installed it, and off they went. And that's kind of the power of this kind of next gen of app building, that for these kind of line of business applications where you just need to innovate how you work, yeah. you know, you don't want to have to spend three years rebuilding those for iPad and don't desktop. Have time. <laughs> yeah. So Jeff, how's this, that dynamic, which is pretty much, I think, consistent with a lot of these uh, new apps, how's it changed your business? Because, you know, the theme that we've been identifying as the mega trend is that there's more project work going on, fast time to value, agile, you guys have been doing exceptional work there in following what Ucentra's been doing, talking to Paul Darty amongst others. You got a huge data science team. So you guys are on, I know you guys have transformed, but big projects and now a bunch of little projects going on. So it kind of has to make you guys more agile as a practice, because you got to go out and solve the business problems with the customers. How has this dynamic changed Yeah, Accenture? you're right, we absolutely do, and, and we have to, as much as anything, it's helping our customers uh, get into that uh, mode of thinking as well. What was once a six months of gathering and documenting requirements is now, you know, done in a, in a handful of hours at first to get the first small bit yeah. of what's going to be valuable functionality to put out there. And you keep doing that iteratively over time is, instead of yeah. a, in a six month period that then gets thrown over the wall to, to have other people do this for 
another you know build stuff for six or nine months. Yeah, after I mean that. the iteration and the getting those wins early gets proof points, right. gets momentum, validation. You're not waiting for a gestation period. You make good decisions about what to do next and and what to not do that you were planning on doing, but turns out doesn't have. I want to get you value. guys thoughts on on something important. And you mentioned humanization. We see that as a big trend. You guys are very people centric in your thinking at Boomi, uh, and we've had this debate on the queue. We kind of didn't come in on either side yet, but you know iteration's great. Iterate fast. But the old days of software, there was a lot of craftsmanship involved. You know, crafting the product, mm -hmm. getting it right. Now it's ship, be embarrassed, ship it fast, and then iterate, which is great for efficiency, but there's a trend coming back to crafting product. It, so, there absolutely is. What is your thoughts on this? Because craftsmanship is now design thinking, what if you're calling it different names, but mm -hmm. this is a new thing. It's happening all the time now. Yeah, so software, software craftsmanship is something that is more important today than it ever has been. Because you're going fast, and because you're putting things out into the market very quickly, you can't afford to make big mistakes, right? You can make functional you know, decision mistakes, right? Oh, that wasn't the right thing for the customer, but having it not work or creating a, a bad experiences, right? Very bad, right? And so uh, that craftsmanship, building in all the DevOps pipelines and the error check, the the, uh, the testing and gateways and security checking, all that happens automatically every time you check in code, right? That is critical, and it drives that craftsmanship back to the developer, right? Pushing left so that. Uh, you make a mistake, you fix it within you know, minutes as opposed to You run product and engineering, weeks. you got a smile on your face. Come on, what's your angle on this? No, no, no it's the same, and craftsmanship is obviously huge. I mean, when we thought about like Boomi, we kind of wanted to make sure that, you know, that, that we used to talk a lot about no-code platforms, and I think that what they did was they left out the craftsmanship that developers can do. And I've kind of thought of it as like, hey, if you can put like, the business or the person who really understands the process or the application into the beating heart of the creation process. So they can be on the right side of the software eating the world, like they can be a creator and a producer as much as they can be a consumer of applications. If you can allow them to do that and then let developers sort of radiate that that out with new engagement models, you know, coding out new experiences that are really hyper specific to the use case or the user. That's kind of the ultimate. You get the the core business value, and then you get the craftsmanship of the engineers together. I think is a and I'm glad you said that because there are so many cases where I hear, oh, we want to push it so that uh, we don't even need software engineers for our mm -hmm. software, and and. That's an interesting ideal. Yeah. But no. it's actually not a good ideal. No, it's. Or idea. Yes. <laughs> Simply because <laughs> it, you, there's an important aspect of software and, and how IT runs mm -hmm. that even if you have low code uh, uh, components in order to drive the functionality, right, there's things that have to be done that frankly, professional software engineers know how to do. It's, and it's better and faster and easier right. to do it that way. Well, I think so. the iteration certainly makes the problem that you're trying to solve solvable, right? Don't take your eye off the main ball, which is solve the problem. Yeah. But get it elegantly designed, <laughs> or <laughs> right. So, so. so I think that's a good, this is a big discussion you're seeing a lot with the low code. Mm -hmm. So again, this is back to custom apps. Custom apps just means a targeted app that solves a specific problem. That's right. Because if it's a unique problem, then it's different than the other one, right? That's the speed game. It's a speed game too now, isn't it? That's right. Fast, fast, fast. And the engineering methods have changed really over the last couple of decades while I've been doing this, where you know, we talked a moment about, ago about the waterfall ways and then the agile ways, and the, the, the simple fact of the matter is that you're developing small pieces of software to get out into the market quickly, and you can do this in a matter of days and weeks uh, as opposed to uh, months and quarters. Right, which many businesses don't have that time That's because right. the comp competitor's going to get in there. I'm curious, as the development methods have changed so dramatically, have the customer conversations, like are you guys talking more with business leaders versus you know, the guys and girls in DevOps? Is, that, is this more of a business level conversation that a CIO, a CFO, a CEO is involved in? So from our perspective at Accenture, the, the technology is always there to drive a business need, and so that conversation is first with the business owners, and that was true 20 years ago as well. Um, the, uh, you know, as much as we do IT transformation, it's you know, business-led IT transformation, and, and more often technology-supported business transformation. Mm -hmm. Excellent, well guys, thank you for joining. John and me on the program today talking about all the things that you guys are seeing out in the field. Exciting stuff. Thanks right. for having us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.
Thank you. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 19. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.